chair's report for the state convention. Okay. Um, it was a, uh, a contentious meeting on Friday night. Um, there are uh, a number of individuals, and I know some of them are in the room and are going to speak to this body at the end of this meeting. Um, this is never an easy process. Um, when I went through this, and, and I was not chair in 2008 when this took place, when you stop and think about it, in, in a congressional district you may have, what, 800 or 1,000 precinct delegates. And then you elect, in this case we had 192 voting delegates to go to the state convention, plus all of our elected officials that are automatically delegates. So the magic number was actually 205 if all of our elected officials had been there. And so out of this 205 and all the alternates that are there, you somehow have to elect three delegates and three alternates to represent your congressional district to go to a national convention. And it's a great honor to be able to do that. Now in 2008, I wanted to put my name and run, and the district chair said, you know what, Tom, you're a young man, you'll have other opportunities. And, and I didn't want to make waves at the time because he had other people in mind to fill spots. And, uh, and so I stepped aside. Um, in this particular case, um, now that it's all said and done, what, what happened here was uh, the Romney campaign, and the head of the Romney campaign in Michigan is, is Attorney General Bill Shoup. And uh, his representatives sat down with me um, several weeks, it's probably been a month ago, and, uh, and said, we want to talk about the 11th district. We want to talk about your election of your three delegates and three alternates. It's going to take place on Friday, May 18th. And um, they reminded me, which I knew already, that when you look at the 11th <coughs> district and how the voters voted on February 28th, it's very interesting. Newt Gingrich got 6.5% of the 11th district. Ron Paul got 10.5% of the vote in the 11th. Rick Santorum got 29.0% of the vote, and Mitt Romney got 51.3% of the vote. The voters clearly stated who they supported out of the 11th district. And so I felt it was appropriate for the Romney campaign to sit down and begin the process of figuring out, okay, who's going to go? And there were discussions with many different people. The Wayne 11th chair was, was a part of one of the discussions. Um, you know. Because you look, the congressional district is so large, it's the new boundaries. We didn't want to alienate the whole one-third of the new part of the district that we've added. We didn't want to have Wayne County not get any representation at all, uh, and those sorts of things. And so through all these discussions, you might remember at our last meeting, I came to you and I gave you six names of the people that were running. As it turned out, the ones who got elected last Friday were five of those six people. One of them, Scott Romney, uh, decided to withdraw his name um, and not run during our Friday night caucus. Um, he decided to run for the at-large slate that got elected on Saturday instead. And so we replaced Scott on our team with uh, the Oakland County Republican Party Chairman Jim Tino. And um, uh, I want to tell you all that um, I feel like I just ran an election for the State House. Because I actually began phone calls to people I know were going to be there on Friday night. I began making phone calls on April 30th. <coughs> and I want everybody in the room to see this. Ronna McDaniel and Wendy Anderson and I ran a spreadsheet with every single delegate and alternate. And we tried calling, emailing every single one of them. Are you going to be there Friday? Here's our team. Here's why we're supporting them. Mitt Romney won the congressional district. Um, we'd appreciate your support. We ran a whip count. We knew exactly where we were when we walked in that room on Friday night. Um, and I know some of the people in the room that are going to speak later are, are upset at how the process works. Um, it, it is one where once I was elected as the caucus chairman, um, I had appointed, uh, the way the state party rules are written is the permanent caucus chairman can create whatever committees he or she deems appropriate for that particular caucus. 
And so I created a, a committee on permanent organizations, which is a rules committee, and a nominating committee. And I know a few people at the table here are in other districts now. Harry's an example, and, and uh, yeah. you know, yeah, you're an example, that you weren't in the room when this took place. Um, and Joe's work wrote a set of rules, and, uh, and those rules were written in such a way that, I'll be honest with you, it favored the team of people that I was supporting. But here's the important point to remember. The rules cannot apply unless the voting delegates at that caucus approve those rules. And so what we did was we read the rules, then we had the round robin of a bunch of candidates come through and speak. And then we read the rules again. And then I took questions from the floor and explained the rules. I said, I wanted to make sure that everyone here understands what you're voting on. If you approve this set of rules, this, this is what will guide us in our selection of our delegates and alternates. It passed by 41 votes, quite easily. And then the nominating committee came back. And there's no surprise here. They nominated the six people that I was supporting. I named the nominating committee. But, once again, the floor was open. We gave an opportunity for others to nominate from the floor. There were two challenges that came from the floor. Both of them got put up to a vote. And both of them, our candidates won by almost three to one margins. And uh, even though, you know, this is one of those situations where you can't please everybody. And it's just, it's the, you never, you know what, it's the nature of the business. When you're going to have a room of 350 people in it, not everybody's going to be happy. And I commented to everybody that there are a certain number of guest passes that are available to go to state con to <coughs> national convention. It is a wonderful experience that I had in 08 as a guest of one of our alternates. I recommend if you get an opportunity. I've asked people to email me. Dolores has emailed me that, uh, that you're looking for a guest pass, for example. Those people are interested in going as a guest. They have not clarified how many guest passes we're going to have. Um, but as soon as I get that information, I will share it with everybody on what the process is going to look like for, uh, for the guest passes. And so um, that is essentially what happened. Now, the individuals that were elected was um, Wendy Anderson from um, Commerce Township, Rana Romney McDaniel from Northville. Uh, Wendy's alternate is uh, John Ricolta, the National Finance Chair for the Romney Campaign. He's from Bloomfield Hills. I'm the alternate for Rana. I'm also from Northville. Jim Tienel is from Waterford. He was elected delegate, and he's the non-recognized delegate. And Deb O'Hagan um, from the Lakes Area Tea Party was the other non-recognized alternate. That has to do with the whole penalty that Michigan is suffering, which we're still hoping to... Um, convince the Republican National Committee to let us seat our entire delegation. But that is not clear as of yet. Um, I also found it interesting to note that there are several members of the 11th District that got elected on Saturday during the at-large slate. One of which, sitting at this table, totally surprised me till I saw his name on the list, and that was Mike Mitchell. <laughs> Mike is, uh, Mike is an alternate. Laura Cox, our Wayne County Commissioner, is a delegate. Um, and then we have people also um, that are no longer in the 11th that are going as well. You're oh. a delegate or an alternate? I'm trying to remember. Delegate. delegate. You're a delegate. Wow. Yeah. So Harry got elected as a delegate in your caucus. Wow. Congratulations. So, um, you know what, overall, I, I thought the Friday Night Caucus went fairly well. Um, are there things that I would do diff differently? Absolutely. It, it's always the nature, if you're going to be a caucus chair and you're going to run a caucus, um, you can always, after an event, look at it and say, hmm, what would I have changed? How would I have handled things differently? And one of the ones that I'll tell you right now is um, we did not allow the different candidates to get up to the podium and have a minute or two minutes to speak to everybody in the room. <coughs> And as I look back on it now, once we had settled on, we did our votes in pairs, where a delegate and an alternate ran together. And so we had basically eight people. We had two different votes that ended up taking place. In hindsight, I, I wish I had allowed all eight of those individuals to have two minutes at the podium, just to introduce and, and, and talk to everybody in the room. Um, so that would be something that if, if I were to run something like this in the future, I would, I would change and do. Um, uh, otherwise, you know what, it's going to be a great convention. Um, I, I am sure all of us in the room want to see 
Barack Obama get defeated? And um, the one thing that comes out of these that you hope doesn't happen is that there's animosity and bitterness with people about the process and how it takes place. It's, it's um, this is, you know, we've all talked about how important this election is. So, and it's very important. So, um, Michael, I'm, I'm not going to take any questions at this point. It's not a question. Okay. A comment. There, there seemed to be an objection to the rules, and where I thought the rules made sense. Male, female, there seemed appear to be an objection to that, and, and, and where you can't have a, an equal split. Uh, since in the new precinct, that, that there are more people in, in the in the Oakland County, the decision that to have one pair in Wayne County and two in Oakland County made perfect sense, and there seemed to be an objection to that. And, and you know what? And I, I I apologize. I, I don't really want this to get into a discussion because I know many of you do want to speak to the committee about what took place this weekend. I, I uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, point of clarification. Um, first of all. Um, you know, there will be a time where, where I would love to go to the convention. But I looked at the list of folks who were nominated and, and who got a spot at the, at the uh, national convention. And, and, you know, these are folks that, that I've seen working tirelessly for this party now for many, many years. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that one of these years I can make a case for myself to be up on that list. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is, and a point of clarification, you mentioned earlier that you brought this list of candidates to our attention at, at the last meeting. And what I'd like to clarify is, is that you did that for informational purposes only. Um, this body had nothing to do with the rules, correct? That's correct. And this no body... One, no one on this body had anything to do with the And this body, and when I mean this body, the, the 11th Republican Congressional Committee, had nothing to do with um, the nominees, the rules, um, or anything uh, else tied to um, tied to the convention. That so, is correct. So I, I think there's some misinformation going on out there, and I just thought it was worth uh, clarifying that point. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad you clarified the part about people who worked hard. I, I want to tell you a story. After 08, and I had that great experience, I made the decision, 2012, I want to go to national convention and I want to be a delegate. And, uh, and I made it very clear. In fact, um, Kathy, you may have been in the room my last Wayne 11th meeting. Right. I announced to everyone in the room, I said, I am not running to be on the Wayne 11th again. I am going back to the 11th District Committee. I was planning on being just a committee member. I wasn't planning to run for chair. And my entire reason for doing that is, you know, the joke is my wife won't let me run for office. <laughs> but it was one of those bucket list items I've been looking forward to for four years was to be able to go to national convention and be a voting delegate. In this case, I'm going as an alternate. Um, but uh, you know what? And, and I've been involved in the party 11 years. Mm -hmm. And and it may be my one opportunity because, you know, it will be other people's chance, you know, four years from now. It is a great honor to be able to do this. It really is. So. Well, you were our taxi last <laughs> and I tell you, he worked so hard transporting people to it, back and forth. It's, well, so that's you a sidebar earned, you earned it. That. You earned it. Well, I drove to Minnesota, Vegas, so the guy Vegas. with the car ended up driving everybody around in Minnesota. That's right. Yeah. I first let me say, I was a national delegate twice for Ronald Reagan. The first time was not so pleasant because I was from Michigan. But the second time was, you know, just really exciting. Um, and I adore Ronald Reagan at the time. I was very upset when I was told that this man was going to be an alternate delegate. This man should have been a delegate. I don't care who was running his delegate. He knows how I feel about it, and I'm telling everybody else. The chair of you, the Wayne 11, or the 11th district, is on the phone day in, day out, night in, night out, and they work very hard. And they take a lot of abuse. Um, people like me who call and say, oh, well, I don't think, you know. <laughs> oh, I try to be nice. <laughs> I always smile. Um, but I'm, I'm still extremely disappointed because he has said for four years he wanted to be a delegate. and and. 
he, he had to suck it up, step aside, and let someone else be the delegate. And while I feel it was wrong, I supported the slate because he's the chair and he asked me to do that. And I did it. And I sat quietly while I did it. And, and I adore Rana. She has worked long and hard and I am not saying she did not deserve it. That is not my comment. But for people who haven't been involved in a long time, it is not easy to be a chair. It is not easy to chair a district caucus. Carl is back there. He knows what I'm talking about. He's a former chair of the 11th district, um, twice I believe, if memory serves me right. And my age memory gets yeah. bad sometimes. Sure. But, um, I understand completely. You used to be yeah. that way to me, too. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I call Carl a few times, too. But, um, and I always smile. But um, I, I am disappointed that this man is not going as a delegate. But I'm also very proud that he said the Romney people should be there to support their relatives. Mm -hmm. So um, I give him an applaud. I, I want to make sure this is very clear, that the, when the Romney campaign sat down with me, one of the difficulties you have when you're putting together your team of 59 people to send a national convention is we have this tendency in the party that um, party leadership is heavily balanced towards men, unfortunately. And so a lot of the districts end up with three men as their voting delegates. And it just, it doesn't look appropriate that you send, you know, a heavily male-dominated uh, contingency to the national convention. And so really what it was, it wasn't that it's, that Rana's maiden name is Romney, it was, you know what, the 11th district is one where we have an opportunity we can send, and two, of the, two will be women and one will be a man. Let's do it that way. And they asked me if I, would, uh, if I would be okay with that. And I told them, I am a team player. I'm here to help. I want Romney to get elected. If, if this is better for the Romney campaign, I'm fine with that. And that's, that's the direction I went. So thank you for those comments. I appreciate that. So. Um, I, I'm not going to take a lot of questions, but I know you've been raising your hand. I'll, I'll go ahead and let you ask. Go ahead. I want to thank you for handling some of the contentious people who were rude at the convention, both on Friday night. I think you did a really nice job. Yeah, it, you know, it's you have to find a balance when you run a, a convention like this. You, you, you have to make sure you allow people to voice their objections to answers. That's why when we got to rules, I took a lot of time a answering questions. I wanted to make sure everybody knew what they were voting on. It, it, and that goes back to when I got elected district chair and we kind of ran the rules through and, I, and it was very contentious and people were upset. And I said, I'm not doing it that way this time. I'm going to be very clear and answer people's questions going through. But at some point you have to cut off debate and take votes and just move forward. And so that's what we did. Thank you for your comment. I'll let you speak some more at the end of the meeting if you don't mind. Um, we're going to move on from state I'm convention sorry. unless there's members of the committee that would like. I, I just would like a clarification on something. Maybe some people around the table can tell me. Um, I had a um, one of the delegates come up to me at the meeting um, during on Saturday and ask me a question, and I don't think I answered it the best way. And I uh, so I'd like to get some clarification because maybe I don't have the information. Is that um, so we have our uh, delegates from our districts. Correct. Uh, and then we have this at-large slate. Yep. Can you tell me how the at-large slate is, is chosen or... The, the official decided. rules in the, in the state party rules of how that process takes place is people submitted their names, like Scott Romney, like Laura Cox, like Mike Mitchell. The names get submitted to a credentials committee at state party, and they go through and come up with the slate and present it on Saturday's um, convention as a whole. And that's how it was handled. So I actually had no input whatsoever. Like I already said, I didn't even know Mike and Laura Cox were on the list until it was presented and all of a sudden I was like, Mike. <laughs> so, you know, that's, uh, that's my understanding. It's submitted to, credential, to um, the credentials committee. They review it. They come up with a team. And I know discussions on that was kind of like the Romney campaign had influence in that as well. Um, and I know those discussions had taken place probably for the two weeks or three weeks leading up to the state convention, um, but I had no input whatsoever in that. So, 
there were, there were 14 delegates in the at-large? 14 delegates, 14 alternates. I have the list. Okay. And, and to give you an idea that, you know, delegates are Governor Rick Snyder and, and Attorney General Bill Schuette and Secretary of State Ruth Johnson, Randy Richardville, Jace Bolger. I mean, these are the people who got delegate spots. Um, uh, David Trott is from our 11th district. Um, and so, if somebody would like to see the list, I, I have the list. I can share it with the committee. You can you can pass it around, and everybody can take a look at it. So, with that said, I think we'll move on um, from that.